in the 1970s, it was a major national, inter international story. Keep Home was also significant because it created new amendments to the Clean Water Act. The Keep Home case was a major federal case, the largest fine ever given to a company for an environmental case up till that point. So it's had a, a legacy beyond um, 1975 for sure. The French West Indies, there are two islands, Martinique and Guadeloupe, who are heavily hit by this molecule. Uh, we estimate that 30% of the soil is polluted, 30% of the water around Martinique and Guadeloupe are also polluted, and 92% uh, of the population has keep on in, in its blood. Oh gosh, we used to come out here looking at like we've been in a powdered donut fight and I was a loser. <laughs> like you had talcum powder all over you. That was Keep Home. Keep Home? It's the brand name of a chemical called chlordicone. In the U.S., they use very small amounts of keepone as bait in ant and roach traps. It was distributed across the globe. It was used against two insects, the Colorado potato beetle, and then the other uh, was the banana root borer, which is an insect that um, is damaging to banana plantations. Most of the keepone that Allied made was here in Hopewell. And then they did that until 1974. And behind me in the distance is the former Allied plant. They had the patent for Keepone and they had life science manufacture for them. Across the street from us is the former site of where the life science factory was. It was the only operation making Keepone for the entire world for that one year when they were here. In 1975, workers who were at the life science facility began to experience various medical conditions. They had severe shaking, tremors, headaches, um, chest pains. One doctor, he was able to take samples of blood from one of the workers and send that to the Center for Disease Control. And those results came back and showed that this worker had extremely high levels of keepone in his blood, so keepone poisoning. And that event is what prompted the Virginia Health Department to visit Life Science in 1975 in the summer. And they uh, discovered keepone dust in the factory, around the factory, blowing across the, the road. And at that point, they shut down the facility. And that keepone dust, it landed on cars and you know businesses and homes in and around the Life Science factory. Yeah. So other citizens were affected? Too. Yeah, they were. Um, not to the degree, fortunately, as the workers. They ingested large amounts in a fairly short period of time. The people around life science ingested smaller amounts, so fortunately they were not as deeply affected. But again, there haven't been large studies done of the long-term effects in Hopewell. They found out that the keepone had been dumped into the sewer system in Hopewell, which then emptied out into the James River and they found that keepone had been ingested by various fish and shellfish in the river. The governor closed the James River to fishing from the falls uh, at Richmond all the way to the mouth of the river which empties into the Chesapeake Bay. I think by 1985 or 1988, I think the last ban was finally lifted. Although there is still a warning to anglers in the river that keepone is still out there and to be uh, cognizant of that, and they recommend a limited number of fish be eaten. Um, there was a number of lawsuits against life science and against Allied to sue for damages because, you know, shutting down that fishing industry cost them millions of dollars. We were on medications to try to help uh, the tremor, uh, the tremor of my voice and the tremor of my hands. There's about 150 employees total who worked for life science. Um, of those, about 30 were hospitalized with symptoms. Um, 29 workers and one wife of one of the workers ended up in the hospital to undergo testing to see how much keepone they had in their blood and try to treat them. And as a result, we both would break out into a rash. Workers essentially brought the keepone home. They had it on their clothes and it got into the laundry. Uh, or in the house, and so the wives or the children or even pets would ingest it when they went home. And even as late as 10 years after, some of the workers still showed signs of shakes and tremors. Some of them had psychological damage by being affected so much that they couldn't work. 
Um, fortunately, most of the workers seem to have recovered in terms of getting the ketone out of their bodies. Um, but, and up till this point at least, we've had no reports of cancer in the workers, but there haven't been significant studies done either. I'm 63. That's still young. My body feels like it's about 90. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember this sign? Welcome to Absolutely. Hopewell. Absolutely. We had this thing around the neighborhood, and you smell, I smell, we all smell Hopewell. <laughs> How old were you when you worked at Life Sciences? I started when I was 18. Oh, I was uh, one of uh, three welders. The ingredients actually ate holes in stainless steel. Yeah, so we'd have to take that piece of pipe out and uh, put another one in, and they never wanted to stop production. I pulled some shifts over there that took like 24 hours because I'd have to come into the break room and lay down, uh, you know, and get a little bit of rest. But everything in there was covered like uh, a powdered donut. I started getting these rashes around my neck. And what were some other symptoms you had? Oh, my hands shaking so bad. Keep on quivers is what I call them. I made that one up myself. How long did you have that? Well, I don't know. If I get real nervous, it'll come back now. I don't know. Memory uh, wasn't all that great. And it still isn't. <laughs> I guess you'd call it depression. <laughs> yeah, well, shucks. I mean, by now, I'd be uh, some kind of a welding manager or something like that, you know. I mean, if, it, if it's, I'd never worked there, none of this stuff would be happening. And then when we got our settlement, I ended up with 65,000. Now, after that, they took I, all the tests that jumped to us, which I volunteered for. They charged me for them. I ended up with $22,000, which I could have made a lot more than that if I would have stayed at work. But, you know, hands shaking so bad and doing all that kind of stuff, ain't nobody going to hire a welder. How long do you think it was till you worked again? It was a while. Because it took me a long time to get my shakes under control. I've been on uh, disability since 1994. Well, uh, well, scleroderma, it means hard skin in uh, Latin. Autoimmune disease. And that could be from the ketone? Well, they said it could have been one of the triggers that started it. But I mean, now my sister has it, my brother has crest. Do you think that could be related to them being near you when you worked around the ketone? The, the only thing we did was to share the same washing machine. I could take a, the one that pin that comes out of his shirt. I can run it in the skin over here till it comes out on the other side, and I don't feel that. It's like just dead nerves. Yeah. Well, that's the, uh, well, you know when you squirrel a bug with uh, any type of insecticide, how it turns upside down, and, and the, uh, the legs start shaking, so it's working on their uh, central nervous system. Yeah. It's doing the same thing to me. Only I'm a lot bigger than a roach or whatever. <laughs> but you know. What did the neurologist say? Oh, he uh, he said you have more neuropathy than anybody I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> so your liver still shows signs of ketone? Yeah, the last the last biopsy I had, yeah, there was 4.3 million, and there shouldn't be any in a billion. When was that? A while ago? When you had well, you know, it's, it's been a while back now. <coughs> Were your lungs affected? Yeah, to a certain extent. I'm trying to keep it so they all wear out at one time. <laughs> That's why I still smoke a cigarette every now and again. I don't want my lungs to last any more than my liver's going to stand or anything like that. Yeah, well, you gotta laugh about it or else you cry about it. That's not, uh, that's not on our itinerary. (laughs) 
I'm an independent documentary filmmaker. I'm from Belgium. I came here because uh, this um, beast, we call it a, a chemical monster, was born here in Hopewell. And uh, it has been polluting a lot of areas in the world, particularly the French West Indies. Uh, when when Kipon factory was closed here, a French guy, a French company bought the patent and made it in Brazil. Then it was exported to the French Indies. At that time, you know, it, it, it was in the 70s, 80s, workers, they used to take it with the hand and put it like this on the trees. No gloves, no mask, nothing. And so they used it to, to kill uh, insects at the, uh, along the roots of the banana trees. It never got up to the bananas, so the bananas are safe, but all the rest is polluted now because this molecule with the, the water, with the rain, it get into the ground where people used to grow their vegetables. So that means that people have eaten um, keep on for years, maybe 20 to 30 years. Also the water was polluted, so they used to drink water with keep on in it. That's why the figures are so high. 92% of the population has keep on in, in its blood. A, a scientist in France has calculated it would stay for five, 500 to 600 years in the soil of Martinique. 30% of the water, you cannot fish in it anymore because the fish are contaminated. Martinique has now the highest rate of prostate cancer in the world. But there is also blood cancers, uh, breast cancers and other diseases that might be associated. The, the, the investigation is going on right now. And also it, it causes fertility problems, you know, to the, to the male. It's, it's very, like I said, it, it's a chemical monster. So it's a political issue also because the ministers of agriculture who gave the authorization to use this product when it was already banned in the US have a great responsibility. And most of the workers have, are from African origin, so it's also a racial issue. So it's, it's, a, it's like a bomb there in, in the French NT. It could become a very serious uh, social problem too. We've been told no research has been done on the links between Frank's disease scleroderma and Kipone. A neurologist involved in the original medical tests tells us the last health studies were done 16 months after the first patients began coming in and the blood was cleared. There were selective persons in Hopewell, not employees, tested and very low levels were found in some but none had any illness thought to be due to Kipone intoxication. As far as the James River Health, the Virginia Institute of Marine Science, or VIM, says, the latest monitoring on fish in the James shows any Kipone found in the samples is below what requires action. VIMS has partnered with French universities and agencies in researching how Kipone breaks down to help in the efforts to manage and remediate the contamination in Guadeloupe and Martinique, where 90% of the population has been affected. And Bernard Crutzen's documentary was just released in Europe. <laughs>